I had a request one for a video that's pretty easy to make so I thought I'd throw this together real quick here and it's about removing the injection pump on the Perkins in an 1850 diesel and uh, pretty straightforward well the the normal stuff disconnect your throttle linkage uh, your shutoff cable which ain't on here right at the moment because this engine's obviously out of the tractor injector lines uh, your return line most engines you have to line up to time them and it wouldn't be an entirely bad idea to roll the flywheel around there's a indicator under this window but when you put it back together normally this windows sealed with a lead seal like that I just had this injection pump gone through a few years ago so you open the window it breaks the seal and then your warranty is void so honestly you don't even really need to do it with these the biggest thing you need to watch for is there's a hash mark right here at the base of the pump this one lined up with this one once you have all your fuel lines disconnected and removed out of the way take the three bolts out they should be studs this one uh, is a bolt for some reason should be studs with nuts on top three of them one in back here and then just lift it on out and you're saying what about timing well there is what's called a blind spline in there let me grab another pump this is an injection pump i don't remember if it's off 285 to 105 one we had laying around and for the most part the same pump oh, this one doesn't have the diaphragm on the front here like the some of them did there was uh, changes in them mounts on pretty much the same way with the three bolts uh, the one difference you'll find between this pump and the 1850 uh, Perkins engine is this gear that's on here as opposed to uh, the 1850 one has there's a stub shaft that goes between the two and the stub shaft goes down into another gear below it and it goes up inside the drive of this and much like this one is what's called a a blind spline in this case there's a spline missing here and then on the drive hub that this sits down into there's a, a large tooth with no gap between it so there's only one way this can go in is uh, with this lined up with that large uh, tooth and then you just line up the, the hash mark which one would that it should be on this one oh no no It'd be on this one but paint's covering it anyways slide that down in and uh so on these they got the little stub shaft i'm not gonna like I say this pump hasn't been that long since it's been worked on i'm not gonna take it off and break seals and have to replace gaskets and stuff but a little stub shaft that goes between and it too has a blind spline in it so it'll only fit one way into the gear below it and it'll only fit one way into this pump so it really doesn't matter where the engine's at because that spline or the as long as you don't mess with any of the gears up in the uh front cover here or anything if you're just taking a pump off then you just uh put that little shaft back in it'll only go in one way then you set the pump down and make sure the bottom's turned to where the blind splines lined up kind of turn it a little until it drops down on that shaft put it back on and when you uh I like to leave it a little loose until I get the lines hooked up because sometimes tweaking it back and forth a little bit will help uh, get a line lined up a little better until the threads are started or whatever. And then once those are all started, then I'll uh, make sure these two lines here are lined up. Tighten all three of the base nuts down and the pump is, should be timed back up right. And then it's just a matter of hooking up injection lines bleeding the system out that's what this little screw here is back it out a little way go around to the other side run the hand pump on the lift pump oh yeah it's working that's a brand new lift pump <laughs> so it should be uh you start with uh of course you you've taken that off you want to put a new uh fuel filter on there's your part number for the fuel filter that's the agco part number uh, bleed that out 
And then, uh, let's see, because this line here goes up to an injector, which returns the fuel tank. But then you uh, just loosen this screw up a little bit, pump on the other side until uh, fuel squirts out of here. Tighten that back up. Have all these nuts tight, but leave the ones at the injectors loose. Then you crank your engine over with the throttle wide open and watch for fuel to start squirting out around these nuts. And when you're getting a good squirt of fuel around each one, stop cranking. Sometimes it takes a couple of cycles. You don't want to crank for a long time and burn up your cables and your starter. So you know, you crank for 30 seconds. If the fuel ain't up there yet, give it a little breather for a minute or two, then crank it over some more until you get those steady squirts of fuel. Then just tighten all the nuts for the injectors and then she should fire up like normal. And don't forget to pull your throttle back down. No one wants a engine wide open right off the start. And that's all there is to pulling an ejection pump on one of these. Like I said, very simple. Now, if you start getting into uh, wanting to change the timing, that's a whole different ball of wax. There's a boatload of gears in the front cover here. Uh, you got your like gear on your crankshaft, you got your counter uh, gear over here that drives the crank or the camshaft. Unlike a lot of engines, the camshaft actually turns the same direction as the engine or the crankshaft in this one. That helped them tuck, tuck it in a little closer and make it a little more compact engine. Um, so then your, uh, your gear here that drives a camshaft also comes up, drives another gear here and another gear here. And there are bolts inside this cover for adjusting the timing on that gear that are uh, slotted and it comes back there's a worm gear drive right here that turns the gear that goes up into that so there are several gears from the crankshaft all the way up to this injection pump and on these it's a bronze gear that's under here and that can get worn and when it does the backlash between the gears can allow the injection pump to kind of flutter at high rpms so if your Perkins kind of misses and pops when it's just you know, at the wide end or at the upper couple hundred RPMs of rev uh, speed, a lot of times that's the problem, is that bronze gear that uh, is under here. And to replace that, you need to make sure your timing's right, in which case you can open your window or... Uh, but, well, that's, that's a big, long procedure that's going to uh, not be in this video. That's why I'm telling you about that. The uh, timing marks on all these gears only line up once. I think it's every 72 revolutions because they ain't exactly like two to one or anything like that. It ends up being two to one by the time you get to uh, from the crankshaft to the injection pump. The injection pump turns uh, half the speed of the crankshaft because it's a four cycle engine. The engine piston only fires every other time that it comes up. So I hope that helps. One other thing I wanted to add, uh, if you're ever looking for your engine serial number on these 354 Perkins, it's right here, right next to the injection pump on the, uh, on the actual block. Early ones like this one is just gonna have a number. Um, then later on, they put on 354, which showed that it was a 354 engine um, which is the displacement of this one. And then there would be some other letters for arrangement. It depended on the year, they kept getting more complicated. There'd be a letter code for what country it was made in. Um, a lot of them have U for the UK, because a lot of them were built there, but they were built all around the world pretty much. And um, then there'll be the serial number. And then at the end is another letter that signifies what year the engine was built. And there's codes for that. Um, I'll put a link down in the description to uh, Perkins' website that explains it all better. Because, like I say, they, they changed their system over the years. And to try to explain it all in one video is, could be a challenge. But uh, just thought you might find that interesting. And if you're ordering the build card for your tractor or something and want to see if it's still got the original engine in, that's where you'd find your serial number to verify that it matches what's on the build card.
So once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.